I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a nasty, fun video. Great, nasty build with the Druid full gunboat on the map Atlantic and Loop later on. You're going to see, but before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support on the channel. And uh, let me know what we could do to make it better in the comments below. At 2,000 subs, doing a free premium DD giveaway. So let's get right to it. This build, I'm telling you, is broken for the Druid right now. And uh, I see a lot of comments saying, hey, I don't know if Druid's really worth it. It takes a lot of you know skill. And I won't blame you there. Um, it does require a little a high level of, th uh, I would say, an increased level of uh, planning, thinking, strategizing, and patience. But man, when it connects, it really connects. So let's, uh, let's talk about basic destroyer gameplay. And I'm doing what I'm doing right now. And analyze what I'm doing. I'm in reverse into a cap. A great, great technique to not only cap a point but mitigate damage if you also have an exit strategy. In case you get spotted or radar or whatever, you then can go full throttle and exit the area and pop your smoke or whatever to get out of dodge and really just avoid uh, getting either torped, shot at, radar, like I'm spotted right here. I have the ability to just hit smoke or just run away and get out of detection. All right, so we capped that point. Great job. We scare away the Haraguma that was at Bravo. Now we're doing another role that the Destroyer player is doing. It's spotting and killing other DDs. So right now we're going to go straight at the Daring, our counterpart here, our sister ship. And we're just going to go full up. Uh, on the two main guns. If you don't know what the Druid is, it's a uh, research bureau ship that has just guns. It's literally just focused on what you're seeing right now. And this is a full gunboat build. And you can see it's just, it just focuses on the reload rate of the gun. And you're literally getting this thing nasty down to 1.3 second reloads on just two turrets, firing 127 millimeter armor piercing only with the improved ricochet angles, you're talking about a very, very deadly little force right here that literally can just push in can uh, expose broadsides or cruisers, can take them out, can take out battleships also. And angling against this thing really does little to nothing. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, a full, a full slim profile cruiser cannot really do much about the Druid as well because the shells, if you arc them, especially at the long range where we're playing at here, about 14 and a half, you can arc these things literally over the ship and down into the superstructure and it's literally devastating for a lot of ships and especially with the reload i mean look at the reload rate we're getting we're getting without adrenaline rush or anything basic right here and here comes fearless brawler kicking in we're getting it down to one what is it fire come on shoot 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 1.3 so 1.3 seconds and look what kind of damage we're doing against the destroyers at 1300 every shot look at that 1400 and that is damage you cannot get back for the haraguma no heals right so any kind of any kind of chip damage you can get right off the bat early in the game is good because it sticks and you're going to see we're going to go up against a marceau we're not afraid i just did a video about how the marceau is probably the best destroyer in the game but man i'm really wondering if the, the druid with this firepower can do this the marceau might have met its match right here because look at the reload rate it is pumping out tons and tons of damage and the Marceau is kind of going one for thinking one for one exchange right here. But if we can get this Marceau out of the game, that is a huge win for us. Okay, I'm not going to pick this fight. I got two fires on me. Know when to pick your battles. You know, I've lost it after getting double teamed here, almost triple teamed. And we're going to pop smoke, get out of dodge, and a great. Always on the move. Always keep running. Okay, I got my damage con going. I've uh, cleared all the fires. I got all my guns back. Now the one now the one downside about the druid is because it's only two forward facing guns they're exposed heavily to fire and they get knocked out very easily. It doesn't matter if whatever you build, preventative maintenance, whatever, they still get knocked out. Guns are guns. Uh, caliber shells seem to do just whatever kind of damage to it, and there's nothing you can do about it other than just get out of, get out, mitigate damage, pop smoke, get undetected, and then get out of there and move on. Target. Again, that's something I really enjoy about the Druid because it just focuses on one aspect of the game, so you can really prioritize your maneuvering your strategy your positioning and again i've always said you cannot correct poor positioning uh so getting your position right off the bat is a very good deed now watch this i'm on the montana right now and we're shooting at range definitely outside of any kind of secondary range of any kind of ship i mean 12 and a half to 12.9 nobody can really hit you from secondary range from these ranges and look at what we're doing right here just just annihilating uh, and look he's angled against us right but look what we're doing we're still doing damage because why it all it's about the amount of shells you're, you're laying down as well as just hitting the superstructure and you know i'm just walking the shells on if i can get superstructure shots that's all that matters i mean now i'm taking damage like 700 at a time i don't think he can afford that over the time his body just cannot cash those checks after 726 every 
every single second. I mean, it is a lot to deal with. Now, we're also getting shot at. He's got good support right there from his destroyer players. Again, great destroyer players help their battleships and cruisers out by negating a de enemy destroyer to take that free damage right there. And we're still getting hit right there. I hate that. 1,500 free damage. I don't like that at all. Pop smoke, get out of there. And now we're getting a Kabarov. So the Kabarov is deadly because it's hard to hit sometimes. It's fast. It's got very accurate guns. It's guns do like nine, this, the Soviet ballistics, like 900 meters per second. It's pretty darn quick. But you know what? We're going to see if we can knock out as much damage as we can right here. Look at that. He's, he's taking all the punishment. And he's like, nope, not going to deal with this. Pop smoke. And he's getting out of dodge as well. So very, very effective right there as a destroyer, hunter, killer. The, the druid is. And man, this thing wrecks shop when it needs to. Okay, we're going to go ahead and undetect him here. Now, here's a beauty thing. Beautiful. Not, not also a beautiful, but terrible thing. The cyclone. The cyclone, as you can see at the top left of that cloud uh, number right there, it's ticking down, meaning that that is the spotting distance, which means for you new players, that means that you cannot get spotted solved, from that range anymore. So right now it's ticking down. It's going to eventually tick down to eight kilometers, which means that no, no matter where you're at, if you're outside of eight kilometers of any ship, you can't get spotted. Even with, even with I think radar is the mechanic that doesn't allow you to see it either. So it's a really weird gimmick. So essentially, like you got to get within eight kilometers. It's trying to promote brawling. And I think it's a very cheap way and kind of ineffective way to promote brawling because people are still out in the distance and they're just trying to get away from everybody so to go into eight kilometers it's really really difficult and not really i would say attractive and most people don't like doing that but whatever so we're gonna see if we can get as much damage and help our buddy out on the alaska because our gk is about to die here but see uh i'm outside of the 11 and a half right now i see the numbers 11 and a half i'm outside 11 and a half of anybody which means that nobody can see me so that's the gimmick the gimmick is saying hey you got to go into eight kilometers if you want to do any kind of damage to see anybody, even if you got a radar, I believe. So let's take a look at this right now. And actually, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm wondering, so if I'm out, I'm within someone's radar range and I, I'm outside of my, that eight kilometers, I can't spot them, but they can spot me. Let me know in the comments below if that is the mechanic of how it actually works. So right now, the Alaska right here pops radar at 10 kilometers. He'll spot me before me. And I won't spot him until I get that's within eight. So let me know if that's true, because I think that's how the, the gimmick works. GK fortunately takes down the fire. Now, look at this. I've always said never, never, ever give up. I mean, look, we're down ships. And we, it seemed like we were losing. We, had, we, were, we only had one cap. And it seems like, wow, they have way that's more ships, area. way uh, bigger ships than we do. We only got three destroyers, and they got two. So never, ever give up. We're going to take a look. We can knock out one of the destroyers, even the playing field right here. Now, look at these. Uh, it doesn't matter if you angle or not. Look at these shells. Look at what they can do. It's up to 65 plus, and boom, splash one. Our first kill of the day right there. And now we also get the small one, or I'm sorry, Hiragumo. And he is going full broadside to us. So look, this is the bad thing. If you're a broadside to Druid, bad day right here because we are going to take 18 to 2,000 damage every couple seconds here. And you just cannot sustain that amount of damage. And now he did a mistake as pop and smoke with nobody spotting for him. That is another problem you have to understand about the mechanics of this game. And he launches torpedoes. Can we thread these things? We take it out, splash two, and we thread that one very good right there. Two kills down right there. 80,000 damage right off the bat. And it looks like we're back in this game, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the power of what the Druid and what a destroyer player that actually understands the gimmicks, the uh, strategy, the positioning, the mechanics of the game. You understand everything and you know every single aspect of your environment. If you understand it, you can use it to your advantage. I know I have a Napoli right here. We're going to go ahead and slow our roll and make sure we don't get within secondary range of a Napoli and just kind of see what develops right. And again, we're not here to rush to our death. We're going to sit here and wait to see what develops and what we can take advantage of. We have our smoke, which is also another advantage of the Druid. It has these quick smokes that are on demand, ready to go. And we're going to see which one do we want to take out first and use it to our so advantage. So we got a Napoli. And notice that uh, as soon as he goes smoke, he doesn't undetect it. But when I'm within eight kilometers of this Vermont and he can't see me, he fired, which means I, because of his spotting range right there of his guns, I'm allowed to get free damage right here. And he's going to take some torpedoes. Now, wouldn't it be great if we can actually take down this Vermont and kind of level the playing field right here and just look at the amount of damage we're doing to his full billboard of a side of a broadside. And we are going to take about 1,900 to 2,000 damage per salvo here, and it is tearing him up. I don't care what you're doing. It doesn't matter if the Vermont angles or whatever. We are still going to do damage because it takes 65 or 68 degrees at least to really mitigate any kind of damage from a Druid. And we're launching these cells out of 1.3 seconds every single time, and it is literally melting this guy down. 
Uh, and a couple techniques here if you want to take even more damage, shoot at the bow. But I'm just shooting at the superstructure because I'm just just kind of lazy. I'm just kind of getting this thing down. I'm just getting real nervous here. We Do we get knock out this Vermont in time? 2,000, 1,000, and boom, he goes down, splash three. He, that is our third kill for the day, and we level the playing field. It's now four to three. Can we take out another ship for our team right here? And let's see, we got the Montana. If we can take out this Montana, man, will we have a major advantage right here. I'm trying to look at my mini map, making sure I'm not getting full broadsided from the right. I don't know where those other two ships are. We get within eight kilometers and we now can spot the Montana. He can't spot us, our detection is at 7.3, but we're gonna go ahead and open up and go loud. We have our smoke on cooldown, ready to go in case he somehow gets all his guns turned in our direction. Now look at this, this is exactly what, this is so broken right here. His guns aren't facing us, his secondaries can't do anything, and we're literally taking so much damage with the full reload. We're getting 1.1 second reloads here. Adrenaline Rush kicked in, Fearless Crawler's in, and we are literally melting this guy. And literally, a nose in Druid is so difficult to hit, even with like just six guns or 12 guns. He fires AP, which I recommend shooting HE, and he just cannot absorb that much damage. We pop smoke, go undetected, and now we get a free cap for us right there. Turning the tide of the game, ladies and gentlemen. 159,000 damage with four kills right there from one destroyer player. This thing is a beast. Okay, so we're going to head fast forward a little bit here. Our Napoli is going to try to take on the Marseille, and I'm going, you know what? I don't know if you can take him on by yourself, and we're almost dead. I'm, I mean, we're almost winning the game. He's almost dead. I decide to pop smoke and see if I can take as much damage to help my player out as much as I can. Let's see here. We, I'm going to aim for his nose, the bow, or even the superstructure. Those are the sweet spots right there for the druid. We're going to get 1,400 damage, 1,900 damage. My gosh. I mean, I mean, if we can't kill somebody with taking 2,000 damage every second, it isn't, I don't know what else we can do here. He's at 40,000 health. Let's see if we can melt this guy. Even though he's angling, you know, I'm still going to take out 700 to 1,900 damage every single time. And looks like our Napoli. I'm trying to get, walk these shells on. Come on. Get the better angles here. Let me walk the shells. Just get as much as I can. We're doing uh, incredible damage. Missed those torpedoes, man. If those torpedoes connect, we would have saved the day right there. And our Napoli won't survive this. We're trying to take as much damage as we can. Come on. He is angling just perfectly here. Our smoke is about to come off uh, the activation here. Okay, it looks like he spotted us now. Look, he's smart. He's looking at us. He's fired his last shot. That might take us out right here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get a couple more kills. Can we take him out? And we don't. Not enough to win the game right there. But we're at 614, 601. Had we killed that guy, it would have been 198,000 damage in our cold bear. Actually pulls through and caps and wins it by points and time. So it looks like our effort was uh, doing just enough to get the Marseille to back off and let our cold bear cap. So, man, powerful, powerful comeback. Way to go, cold bear. And, uh, man, what, a, what an exciting game. But, man, this druid build is redonkulous. Um, I'll give you a, a, a glimpse of the build at the very end, but we were not what we were number one hundred and ninety eight thousand damage. Yep, number one on the team, 2,400 base XP, pretty ridiculous. Here's a map loop now with the same build, and this is another example of why this thing is so broken. The amount of range and damage you can do um, with this build is incredible, and I'm I'm thinking about putting Cunningham on it because in the the Commander Cunningham, if you don't know, if you do get two kills in a game, you get an extra heal, an extra smoke, an extra hydro. So pretty pretty ridiculous. So let's take a look right here what we can do. Um, actually, I believe it's just with Cunningham you only get an extra heal. So take that back. It was just an extra heal right there. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. We get the gearing. Okay, we're shooting at long range, so any kind of damage we do on the gearing right now is going to stick, which means he won't be able to come back or heal it later on. So taking any kind of health off right now will help us on long-term dividends. So let's see if we can get some more damage right there. Yep, there's some more damage. Hey, that's 300 health. He can't get back. The CV's doing a great job of spotting right here. Again, I hate CVs, but oh well. Okay, let's see if we can knock out the... Okay, he goes undetected in his smoke. So we're going to go in and get the free cap at Alpha here. Again, notice I did not rush right into my death at Alpha. We don't know where the enemy's at. We don't know where radar is at. Again, you want to kind of scope the playing field first, get a feel for the environment, see that the, either the DD is charging or getting away, and then we can go and proceed in. We're going to go ahead and take Alpha right here and see if we can flank the Wujing on our left. But again, we're spotted right now, which means that the gearing is literally in front of us. Again, I sacrificed concealment because... I 
I don't really care about concealment. I care about fast firing guns. I'm going to get detected from the moon anyways. Let's just get detected. Let him open up. He can't do anything to me right now other than torp. So let him just detect. go undetected or shoot. And if he shoots, he reveals his position. So he goes undetected. Nope. We're getting within his detection of 5.9. That's a good... T uh, uh, that is a good aspect of the game to know. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can shoot. Notice his angling doesn't do anything. It, literally, these guns are ridiculous. I mean, we're going to take off, you know, five damage. And here, uh, 300 damage, 500 damage, whatever. And then the CV comes in That's and takes the done. kill. Wu Jing will be okay. Looks like he's against two versus one. I'm not going to deal with him. I'm more interested in this target up here. Remember when I said I don't like CVs? Well, here we go. Look at that CV right there coming in within range of our guns. Again, with this full gun range bill, we can reach out and touch somebody at 14 and a half. Excellent, excellent round. We're going to start firing. I don't care if I'm spotted. Who cares? When I fire, we're going to get spotted anyways. And we are going to take the, the heat off our team from the CV uh, bombing, free bombing. We're not going to allow that to happen. And just look at the damage we're going to do for a full broadside midway right here. 1400 damage every single time we're going to take these salvos i'll take it all day long and with the fearless brawler captain bill look at the amount of damage we can do to these planes i mean the a on the druids nothing to laugh at it actually is doing somewhat of some kind of decent damage even though i know aa is trash these days but it's doing something right so look at the at the top right we're taking up some damage and we are knocking his planes out of the sky one by one but he forgets that we're also taking damage off his carrier and these planes won't have a place to land in a minute here so we're going to go ahead and take the uh, CV player out, and that gives us a major advantage in the game. So, man, just look at the amount of shells we're putting down right here. 1.3 second reload. Man, this is ridiculous. This is a minigun right here. Mini Minitar with a minigun on the front bow of a druid. Something to met something not and notice that the CV player has to focus on us, which means we are drawing fire away from our friendlies. No CV threat for our friendlies. We are a no-fly zone and we are a no CV zone and we are doing our job. Notice that I just summed up everything in the video here. We cap, we spot, we DD hunt, we kill CVs, we also provide AA, we're providing smoke and if I had torpedoes, we would, but we don't. We have full caliber guns that literally do all the business right here. So we're getting another Nice, full, broadside shot to the midway, and boom, splash one. He goes down. That is our CV kill of the day. That is all we care about. But now let's turn back around and go ahead and do our other job as a destroyer player is Cap Bravo. And again, man, I'm telling you, destroyer players literally do everything better than CV players, better than um, uh, submarine players, because we have to go spot. We have to go cap. We have to take the objectives. We have to help our team. We have to lead our team. We have to spot for our team. We have to call targets for our team all things that look at that we just melted 12 airplanes right there not nothing to gawk about again we're providing anti-aircraft support my goodness this thing does it all i'm telling you a destroyer player is so fun all right now we're going to do another cool thing we're going to go ahead and push the enemy team with a destroyer because man i i have 26,000 health i've got the two heels i've got smoke i've got hydro and i've got these massive guns and these things do so much damage even at range we're going to be outside of secondary range right here and we're just going to shoot i mean this thing is literally dick so deadly and then we're going to stop and then go reverse and we're going to bring the fight uh bring draw them in to our um, our friendlies here so they can take a lot of the you know get in the game and take some damage but you know you're going to notice we're also going to continue drawing fire from the enemy team you notice we have friend uh, these friendlies behind us, and guess what? The battleships and everybody elect to shoot us because why? We are a bigger threat to them. So that's another beautiful job that the destroyer can do. Now we're gonna pick targets here, choose them wisely. I'm looking for a nice broadside to get this maximum damage, but again, it doesn't matter if you angle. We're still gonna take damage. We're gonna take damage off you for going. See, we're still taking damage. Okay, there's damage. Okay, now we're gonna aim at the the bow, which is the front of the ship of the Columba right here, and notice how much damage we can do just hitting it. It's the sweet spot of any ship is the bow. It's some of the weakest armor in the game. It's the bow. So we're going to take a look. Oh, he goes undetected. He pops smoke. Now we also have a threat here. Annapolis has radar, so we're going to have to eliminate him. He is our priority right now. Know to pick your targets wisely because you want to eliminate any kind of threat to you and your ship. Okay, so we take a major salvo right there off the front, and let's see if we can do damage. Okay, we're still doing damage, even though he's angling. Let's see if we can knock out some more. Oh, yep, 1,500 damage right there. Look at that. We are knocking out. Oh, he has to angle to those torpedoes. He takes a major torpedo hit. That was good on our buddy's part. 
and it doesn't matter if you angle there, uh, Annapolis, we're still going to take damage. I'd rather take it. It's free damage for us. Go ahead and take it. It's whittling down. I don't care if it's 200 or 100. It's still damage. And he's switching to AP, which I'm not sure why he's doing. He should have stuck with HE. It would have been better. And we're going to go ahead and take more and more. And again, his angling is not doing anything for him right now. We're going to go ahead and take it. We're going to go ahead and pop our smoke. Our smoke comes back just in time. I love these quick, uh, quick reloading smokes. They're awesome. They come in clutch. And right here is his mistake. He fires AP again. He's out of... Uh, He's out of hydro, he's out of radar, so I guess we're just going to have to take him out. And he's pushing because he has nothing else he can do other than just to take all this damage. And man, he is literally biting the business here. And do we get this kill just in time, just enough? Come on, baby, get that superstructure hit. And boom, splash three, he goes, or splash two, he goes down. Now we're going to take on the Burgoyne. Can we hold this flank? We're going to shoot at the nose. Look at that nice, juicy damage right there because the front of the ship is the weakest part. He is just melting 700 at a time, and boom. He goes down, but our buddy, way to shoot at, and now he is the last ship, Columbo, and guess who he's going to shoot at? We're going to take his full broadside shot right here because why? We are a bigger threat to him than a battleship. That tells you this thing's broken. If a destroy little destroyer is stronger than a battleship, something's wrong here. Battleship's still looking on his He's not going to fire at anybody else. We're going to look at his bow and keep on firing. Melting, melting full pins. And do we get this kill to end the game? Boom, splash three. He goes down, seals the victory. One little destroyer does all that. My gosh. 141,000 damage right there. I believe we did a major blow to the team right there. Let's see, we're number one. 25 planes shot down as well. Man, this thing did the business. Number one in the team, 2200 base XP. My gosh, guys, try this build out. Check out the Druid. Definitely recommend. Totally, totally awesome. Taking up 1.3 potential damage as well. We were drawing so much enemy fire, and uh, we were just doing it. We were doing our role today. So take a look at the video. Here's the build at the end of the screen for full gunboat build. Totally broken. Totally awesome. Hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe. Make, your, make sure you salute and say hi out there, and as always, stay safe. Cheers.